Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another review video. This time we're going to look at a bunch of hand drawings. Now, this is a MP3 player sent over by a AGP Tech. I guess that's how you pronounce that. And yeah, very interesting kind of hand drawn. Looks like uh, doodles in a sketchbook sort of thing. All related to like music kind of stuff. And oh yeah, this is an MP3 player. Um, some specifications. This is a 32 gig model. Uh, let's see, model, I'll give you two model numbers, A19X and A17X. I don't know which one this is specifically. I just know it's a 32 gig model. And yeah, <laughs> tips for first use. It's uh, compatible with everything, of course. And it'll charge on USB, of course. Not suitable for children under three years old. Box is actually kind of hefty um which is interesting so hopefully that means it's packed full of goodness and yeah forum etc etc one year warranty etc etc no no usual technical specifications on the outside which is different for a change anyway uh let's just pull it open okay wow camera's having a hard time focusing on this i know yeah it's uh just packed in here and here it is. Take a look at that in a sec. A uh, piece of foam. Okay, that's uh, interesting. And uh, we have, oh, I was hoping for a type C. It's, it's a good old friend, a micro USB, which I guess it's ubiquitous, so at least there's that. And the cord is about a foot long, so not like super tiny either. And it has a very long, like, shank on it. Like, what is going on with that? Maybe the port's recessed a little bit? Oh, we'll have to take a look in a sec. And horrible, horrible cheap earphones, which I'm not even going to bother trying on because, yeah, I never use these. If anything, I save the cords and stuff in case uh, I need to snip off the earbuds and, like, patch the cord in for, like, a, another broken pair of headphones. Maybe I might save this just for the cords and maybe the ear tips if they fit on other headphones that I own but yeah and it has this uh, lanyard thing which is a lanyard oh and then screws okay I don't really know anyone who uses lanyards for like electronic devices anymore but hey at least they gave you it and here we go this is apparently the a19 model don't know what the difference between the 17 and 19 probably capacity I'm guessing the 17 is like 16 gigs and this is 32 or something like that. Anyway, wow, pretty text heavy here. Wow, there's just <laughs> there's a lot of information. But uh, yeah, most importantly, 2.4 inch uh, TFT LCD. It's made from zinc alloy. That's interesting. Maybe that's where that heft. Oh, yeah, this is pretty hefty. If you throw this at someone, it cause them some damage. Uh, yeah, USB 2.0, yeah, exactly. It's a 16 or 32 gig, uh, but it does have a micro SD card, so you can go up to 128 gigs, um, maybe even more than that if you have a larger card. Oftentimes, this is what they test up to, but it's not necessarily the maximum that it could accept. And here you can see it plays pretty much everything. It does have built-in Bluetooth. Uh, it does video and ebook and voice recording and whatnot but pretty much i'm just going to use this for music and then maybe bluetooth it says uh playtime should be pretty decent using headphones 48 hours bluetooth it drops way down to 6.5 hours that's kind of a shame video 10 hours i don't know why you'd want to watch video on it 14 hours for radio and recording is 50 hours has a 560 milliamp hour battery and it says the charge rate is half an amp so two and a half hours to, to full. And yeah, the rest of it's just in another language. So let's see what we got. Yeah, this does feel very nice. This is actually metal and wait a minute. Okay. So yeah, it's metal and I wanted to say glass, but I think it's plastic it might be very thin glass but only a couple buttons we have 
I guess the power button on the side here and then volume up and down here and those are the only physical buttons the rest are actually touch buttons which we'll get to in a sec <laughs> uh, there's a reset or like a recessed hole in there okay uh, the USB port is not recessed actually it's like right up against the edge so for some reason you just get like a super long USB cord that'll stick out <laughs> like way more than it needs to and uh, we have our micro SD card slot and our headphone jack at the bottom and there is a built-in speaker and let's just uh, fire this guy up hopefully it has a charge there we go and yeah the buttons light up they are capacitive touch so yeah, uh, let's just get that out of the way. Uh, capacitive touch buttons, like on a fixed interface like this, not like a touch screen, you actually have to look to use it. You can't do it by feel because there's no tactile feedback at all. There isn't even haptic feedback, so there's no motor to like vibrate slightly when you touch it. That kind of helps, but oftentimes not really either. So yeah, if you're gonna, if you want an MP3 player that you just stick in your pocket and then you can control it without looking at it, this is not your guy. Uh, you're gonna want to get one with actual physical buttons. But I mean, this does look very nice. There are blue LEDs underneath, though they could definitely use more diffusion. I can actually see the points of light underneath, and the uh, icons aren't evenly lit. So if there's maybe a diffusive layer that would make it look aesthetically a little bit more pleasing. But yeah, you can navigate. It's a four-way navigation. Play pause, which probably doubles as uh, enter, and then a back key to back out. And there's a like a menu options key, which I'm guessing if you're within a menu, it'll bring up like a subtext sort of thing. So if we go to folder, yeah, there you go. You can like delete, for instance, in this context. And yeah, it looks pretty standard to a lot of other players. This is going to be, this isn't going to be like Android or anything. This is just running its own Flash based UI uh, that's programmed for the specific uh, CPU in here. But yeah, it has a browser system, FM radio, which I wonder if you need the headphones inserted. Let's just see, how do I manual tune? Yeah, you need to plug in headphones. And exit. I mean, so far, navigation is kind of intuitive. Tools. What's in tools? Oh, it has a pedometer. <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess it sort of works. I don't know how accurate this would be, but... No, no, I don't want to save the steps. Okay. We have photos, and it just comes with some photos. Okay, I'll be honest, the screen's not so great. The picture probably doesn't help because it's very low resolution. It looks better than on the camera. On the camera, it looks really blue for some reason, but in real life, it, this is actually white. It, it's a snowy scene. Yeah, so something, something is going on. The LCD viewing angles aren't great you go off axis too far and so like I said you probably would not want to uh to use this for like viewing photos or videos just use this as an mp3 player basically there's a calendar which is uh interesting okay uh is the time correct no it's not even remotely correct <laughs> so I'm gonna have to change that uh stopwatch okay fair enough clock Oh, you can actually use this like a, as an alarm clock. And because it has a speaker, it'll actually uh, make noise. So I guess that's something. An ebook. Let's just see how bad this is. Huh. <laughs> uh, not English. Uh, what? Wingdings? Okay, uh, frequently asked questions is just a bunch of... Oh, it does remember where you left off. Uh, if only this were actually legible. Uh, update. Yeah, this must be in, like, uh, Chinese or something, and 
it can't parse the text because I have a feeling if I open this on a computer, it would actually not be English text. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess if you wanted to, you could do that. And settings, uh, we can actually turn on and off the, uh, the button light. That's interesting. So that'll make it impossible to use if you turn it off because then you can't see the where the buttons are. So why, why is this an option? <laughs> You can turn off the button lights, but there's no visual indication of where the buttons are. So unless if you have them memorized, then you're kind of locked out of that menu, and it will be kind of difficult to find your way back. That's so weird. Brightness, we're on six. Goes up to a goes up to eleven, of course. And backlit timer, standby background, shut down settings, probably yes, yeah, sleep timer, etc. Speaker. Oh, good. You can actually, okay. Uh, one of my complaints was going to be I've had MP3 players with speakers before, and if you use Bluetooth and it disconnects, and it'll just start blasting out Bluetooth or uh, the audio out of the speaker. And if you're on like a bus or something, that could be kind of embarrassing. Or if you're in a library, that would be bad. But thankfully, they thought of that, and you can actually physically switch off the speaker. I'm going to leave it on for now. But that's, that's actually a really good idea. I, I appreciate that they actually thought of that situation. And date and time, we can set that up. And format device, information, player info, software version. It's actually semi-recent uh, from a few months ago. And, oops, and disk space I have, yeah, 32 gigabytes just about. And... Yeah, that's about it in settings menu. Uh, there is a video, but it might be copyrighted, so <laughs> probably not going to play it. You, know, you know what? Let's just see. Just turn down the audio. It's like a very low resolution. Uh, I don't <laughs> like a concert. <laughs> what in the world? OK, yeah. That's uh, random. Yeah, let me, um, I'm actually going to stick a micro SD card full of MP3s, like, you know, 320 kbps, decent quality, and have a listen on this book through the speaker, Bluetooth, as well as headphones, and see how, how good this is. Okay, it's been about two weeks, and I've actually carried this in my pocket more or less every single day uh, to work, and I actually use this at work just to listen to music while I'm working. And I've just realized uh, there's like a piece of dust underneath the lens. Uh, yeah, that's not a good sign. So I guess dust somehow got in from my pocket, probably through a headphone jack or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's going to annoy me. I'm going to have to try to get that out of there. That Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I use this every single day for a solid, like, five or six hours kind of straight ish and here are my thoughts on it uh it's actually a pretty solid player i like that the sd card actually sits flush it makes uh inserting it and removing it really difficult unless if you got like kind of some fingernails to actually push on it and you got to watch out you're pinging the card off when you're trying to remove it but other than that at least it sits flush so it's not going to accidentally get bumped or something while it's in your pocket I don't really care for, let me just turn this on. I don't really care for the uh, the touch buttons. You can see it does this kind of neat animation thing, whatever you're touching while it's booting up. And then it all goes down. But uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan, honestly, of the touch buttons. I think it just would have been better with physical hard buttons that you can't accidentally uh, bump or anything. Uh, the build quality, absolutely no issue. And I, I think I'd said this might be plastic. I'm actually pretty sure now it's glass. Uh, even though it's like super thin, it does not flex. Uh, doesn't scratch easily. I, I have this in my pocket with my wallet and a bunch of other stuff. And I don't see any scratches so far. So definitely good signs on that. Uh, things that I really like. Uh, Bluetooth actually works surprisingly well and audio quality is actually surprisingly good it's better than i thought it, obviously it's not going to be like you know high resolution or you know super high fidelity 
But actually, if you get a decent pair of headphones with these, like those, uh, what was it, the KZ Pros or whatever they're called, the uh, the kind of budget, really good for the price sounding headphones, you stick those in your ears and plug it into this, and it sounds fantastic. Uh, definitely good enough for me while I'm, I'm off doing work or whatever. I even had these hooked up to my uh, Sony XM3s, whatever the model number is. And those are like my most solid pair of headphones that I own. And it, it sounds really good through those. So uh, the audio quality was surprisingly good. And I, I don't know if I mentioned or not. I think last time I checked on the price, this is not super expensive. It's like 30-ish, maybe a little more than that. Uh, so if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll put an annotation here. But yeah, for, if, if assuming that's the price, this is actually a pretty decent deal uh, if you can live with the whole touch, you know, touch controls thing, uh, which may make or break it for pe some, you know, some people. But uh, I just wanted to give you a demo. I actually had not. I, I did set up the time and everything, so that that's all correct. I actually just want to go back, and I. Um, I added, originally I just used a micro SD card and I used that to listen to music. It worked fine. However, the kind of biggest annoyance with that is it, you can just do um, like folder browsing. It doesn't actually extract kind of the artist's information or anything. So you can't actually do like a search by browsing by artist or like genre or anything like that. In order to do that, it has to be on the internal memory. Now, luckily this does include, I think, there are two different versions, a 16 and a 32 gig. I have the 32. And so I was able to fit all my music without having to resort to compressing uh, more or less all my music in a 320 kbps mp3s on here. And so, yeah, I'm able to actually go through. And if I were to uh, go through and hit music, I can actually, you know, sort by albums or whatever. And so that all works now because it's on the internal memory. However, if I had an SD card, uh, it just would not show up under there, uh, which is rather unfortunate. I know why they're not doing that. It's because then you have to cache everything to RAM. And I'm guessing maybe there's not enough RAM to do this on this system. Uh, so anyway, uh, another thing is this home screen. It's really hard to tell without you moving the icons where you are. I will say... It looks pretty bad on the screen, like the contrast ratio. It's it's slightly better, a little bit better in real life. This looks blue for some reason. To my eyes, it actually is purple. But yeah, you could see when I'm trying to scroll, they should have done more to, to differentiate, to show you what icon you're on. It's just slightly larger, and the text is purple instead of white. But oftentimes I'll see, I'll, I'll look at this and I'm like, where the heck am I on here? And I have to click the button to see what moves. Oh, oh, I'm on folders now. So I think maybe if they uh, like drew a box around the icon in like white or some like high contrast color or did something else to like make it more obvious where you are on the menu, that, that would have been a little nicer. Uh, another thing is uh, let's fire up the speaker going to have to actually find something. Give me one sec that I can play copyright free. Okay, um, so I guess I'll just play Chibi Ninja. Turn up the volume. This is the internal speaker on the bottom. And turned up all the way. So I will actually say, let me turn this down before I'm going to, in a second, connect this over Bluetooth and I know it's going to blow up my eardrums, so I'm not looking forward to that if I leave it on the wrong volume. Anyway, uh, it's surprisingly loud for how small it is. Uh, audio quality is tinny, you expect that, as one of these tiny, like, smartphone little pancake speakers, so I wasn't expecting it to, you know, blow me away or fill the room with, with sound. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's sort of a gimmick, I guess, if you wanted to listen out loud. But you're you're just so much better off just getting a Bluetooth speaker. You don't even need to get a fancy one like a, a Bose, but anyone will do pretty much will be better than the internal speaker here. Let's see the process of uh, pairing over Bluetooth. 
it's actually pretty good. I've I've used it with uh, two or three different devices on Bluetooth, I think, and neither of them had an issue pairing. So we'll just turn this on. This is uh, we're in a way there. I will put it in pair mode and just hit Bluetooth. Uh, on off on I think I left it on before so search for the device search for device <laughs> uh, let me see maybe maybe it's I, I haven't used a speaker in a long time I always use the NFC tag which this does not have so maybe it has to be in the white blinky mode Uh, hopefully I can of course I just went around saying that I had no trouble pairing and then all of a sudden uh, I can't pair it <laughs> yeah for some reason it's only finding the previous devices give me one sec okay for some reason it took a second more I wasn't giving it enough time to populate the list because it, it pops up with the thing saying searching done and then it wasn't finding it I had to give it like two or three more seconds okay fine Bose mini so Sue, I'm guessing sound like it just got cut off. Okay, fine. Pair. Please wait. And any second now. Any second. Wow, the viewing angles on the screen really not so great. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it took about, like, what, 10 seconds. Okay, fine. Fair enough. You only have to pair it once, so. Uh, reconnecting. One thing that I wish it did was uh, that it would auto-connect next time you turn on the MP3 player and the Bluetooth device. It doesn't do that every time you have to go into this menu and uh, go into device list and then click on the, the device that you want to connect to. So it's a bit of an annoyance. So anyway, let's just go to now playing and play this. It works. Uh, I actually did a, a, a range test using my, my Sony headphones, and I had this upstairs, and I went downstairs, and I walked to, like, every corner of my house that I could, and it just started barely cutting out once I got downstairs to my kitchen, which is on the opposite side of the house from my bedroom. And so that's probably, well, through one floor, clearly, and, like, maybe a couple walls or something the signal might have ended up going through. But in total, that's probably about like 40-ish feet, maybe. Maybe about like 35 to 40 feet. So that's actually not horrible. I've definitely had other Bluetooth devices that, that uh, you lose your, your connection like much easier. So Bluetooth seems to be pretty good, surprisingly, despite the fact that like half the device is made of metal, which would seemingly block the signal. So yeah, um, when I was actually using this with it in my pocket, I've never had it drop out on me. So uh, clearly the, the actual like design of the antenna and the RF design is, is solid. So uh, Bluetooth, I'm really happy with actually. So let's just turn this off. Uh, there we go. And uh, one other cool thing is uh, if you have a player that has like transport controls like play, pause, and track skip, uh, pre pressing them on the audio device will actually control this. So their implementation of the Bluetooth audio spec is is on point. So you can control the player from your headphones, basically, which is really nice. Th that shouldn't, I, I shouldn't be surprised by that, but actually a lot of other Bluetooth devices I've tested out, that's not always the case. Uh, sometimes if, if the implementation is kind of shoddy, uh, if you press, you know, the play pause on your headphones, it won't actually pause, you know, certain players. But this one, yeah, it does, works just fine. Uh, other than that, the album art, it actually will show up if you have a song with album art. Uh, this one doesn't, so it just has this record, you know, icon or whatnot. 
Uh, the screen's not that high resolution, though, and the viewing angles, like I said, aren't great. So at least it shows you the album art, but it's nothing like that's fantastic to look at <laughs> because it's not going to look you know, particularly great either way. But yeah, uh, one other thing, if I go into like settings here, so we can change the play mode. The shuffle mode on this, on certain devices, uh, the shuffle is like really poorly implemented. Uh, this device actually implements it correctly. Uh, like the one of the Sony MP3 sticks that I have, uh, when I put songs on shuffle, I notice that if I select the same starting song, it'll always be in the same order. So they basically have like a, a statically seeded pseudo ra random function, that means, which is really crappy. <laughs> And but this one, I put it on random and it really does appear. I have a lot of songs on here. I have probably like, I don't know, 6,000 or something. So it actually does appear and I've skipped through quite a number of them and I can't see any kind of pattern that shows up. So I'm happy to say that if, if you're a shuffler like me, that this will work just fine for that. Another thing I really like what they did, you can have uh, an equalizer. A lot of them have these kind of crappy ones that are like just generic rock funk classical whatever this actually has a custom one and it's like super configurable it's a uh let's see one two three four five six seven band equalizer and you can go plus minus 12 in either direction for every uh, frequency range and it, it is like pretty pronounced i've only you know up this one like one or two ticks and that's like you know, definitely good enough for bass for me. And I, I'm a pretty big bass head. So yeah, just, I tuned it. It's, it's almost flat, it just has a little bit of a downward curve and then it goes back up on the high end. And that sounds fantastic to me. So just the fact that you can fi uh, configure that is really, really good in, uh, in my eyes. You also got variable speed playback and you could set a max volume limit if, uh, if you're giving this to your kid. So yeah, they actually did put a lot of thought into uh, configuration. Uh, you can even bookmark, I guess, if you have audiobooks. Uh, I do not listen to audiobooks. Uh, but yeah, if you wanted to, you have that too. So they actually definitely put a lot of thought into like the underlying functionality. The UI is okay. It's, it's, it's a little bit dated. Kind of this menu system and the aesthetics and this, you know, homepage... This looks like something that would have been released maybe about 10 years ago. So it's not like super fu futuristic, but it's it's functional. And I guess that's all, all you really need by the end of the day. Uh, they do have some other features like a voice recorder. I'm never going to use this to record, you know, audio. I, I have dedicated voice recorders and whatnot. So and I don't know who in their right mind would want to read an ebook on this LCD uh, that just sounds like torture to me. There are tools like you got a pedometer, you can look at photos, which I wouldn't suggest either. Calendar, stopwatch, clock, whatever. These are just freebies that are thrown in there. I really don't care about them. Yeah, so do I recommend this to someone? Uh, that little piece of dust or whatever that is in the corner there notwithstanding the build quality is really good I, I actually think they did a, a pretty good job of that uh, there are some small usability things like like I mentioned with um, the icons and whatnot could be a slightly better the LCD is not so great don't not really a big fan of the, the touch buttons but if if you're using this sort of just on a table or whatever and you just want to link bluetooth and set it on shuffle and let it go and then just lock it uh, this will work just fine definitely don't expect to be able to control this in your pocket like i know a lot of people will buy mp3 players with physical buttons still because you can use it you know without you know with gloves on you can use it without taking it out of your pocket so they're great in like the winter time or if you're into like skiing or whatever and you just want a small mp3 player uh, that this is not your man in that case, unfortunately. But yeah, 32 gigs, uh, decent capacity. Just I wish the integration of the SD card was a little bit better. Uh, then I, I would definitely uh, use this a lot more. I mean, 32 gigs isn't 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 a small capacity. 
and most of my library can fit comfortably on there and especially if I did compress I could get it to fit more but I feel like that would be doing a disservice because the sound quality is actually you know pretty decent on this guy so I don't want to have to you know recompress my whole library just to make sure that every song fits on there uh, but yeah the the SD card lack of sorting options and whatnot kind of kills that feature for me uh, but I suppose if you just are happy enough um, browsing your SD card using the folder file system, then I guess that's that's fair enough. Now, would I suggest this uh, in competition with something like a Sansa Clip, which is probably going to be very closely in the price range? Uh, possibly. Now, the, the Clip, they don't make them anymore. Well, they make newer versions that are crappier if I'm being honest but uh, if, if you're looking for a clip you're probably going to want the best bang for buck is the clip plus uh, which is discontinued so you'll be getting a used one so the batteries aren't going to be so great uh, now both these devices do have SD cards uh, the user interface on the clip is much simpler but you have the added uh, cool factor of being able to install Rockbox on there uh, which is really cool which I believe I have yep <laughs> I have it on here and yeah and i did a battery mod these are really easy to modify so I, I just stuck like a large cell phone battery that lasts forever on here and yeah so it's kind of a tough race if you want something small that you can put in your pocket and you can manipulate and control without having to see the screen just using the hard buttons i would go with the sansa clip plus uh, but if you want something that you know has kind of the more flashier style of the uh, the touch buttons and whatnot, and maybe a slightly easier to navigate UI. Uh, I would probably suggest this over the Clip Plus in that case. Uh, but in terms of sound quality, both of them are actually really good. Uh, <laughs> I used to rock this back in the day with, um, with like larger headphones, and the uh, the DAC that they put into the Clip Plus is, is fantastic. So yeah. Anyway. So if you guys are interested, I'll have links to this uh, AGP Tech MP3 player in uh, the description below. And if you have any specific questions, uh, you know, just put them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.